Travis Kalanick's success story. Quick question, do you know Uber? And if you do, have you ever wondered how it's killed up so quickly in only a couple of years? No, we're not referring to Uber's founder, Garrett Camp. While Camp may have conceived the startup, there was this other guy who incubated it, Travis Kalanick. In today's video, we'll take a better look at this internet entrepreneur who took part in founding one of the biggest multinational transportation companies in America and joined the country's richest doing so. We hope this video gives you the courage you need to believe in yourself and pursue your biggest dreams. If you're new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other interesting videos like this. On August 6, 1976, Travis Cordell Kalanick was born in Los Angeles, California. He was the son of Donald and Bonnie Kalanick, who raised him for most of his childhood at Notridge, California, along his younger brother, Corey Kalanick, and half-sister, Angie Arm. Kalanick's father worked as a civil engineer, while his mother worked as a retail advertiser for the Los Angeles Daily News. Unlike his parents, Kalanick had the fortune of learning how to code with his home computer. This because the popularity of PCs in the 80s made these systems a common sight in the average American household. By the time Kalanick reached the sixth grade of middle school, he had grown accomplished enough in coding. By no means was he a prodigy, but he believed himself good enough to pursue the subject further in the later years. It suppose it would be a real waste of time if he let all that interest and effort go to waste. As a teen, his mother's occupation as a retail advertiser inspired him to take baby steps into the business world and he absorbed as much knowledge as he could. However, there was only so much knowledge that Kalani could muster where the experience was sorely lacking. He would eventually gain the experience from selling knives for a direct sales company, Alcas, known as Cocteau door to door. It fetched him some money in his spare time. After school, Kalanick was ever the typical American kid with average grades who loved playing sports. But being a child with a small stature, he suffered bullying from the bigger boys, who often picked on him. Kalanick would eventually reach the end of his rope and vow that nobody would ever push him around again. This vow would shape Kalanick's psyche for years to come. By 1994, Kalanick found the lure of computers compelling enough to study computer engineering at the University of California, Los Angeles, UCLA. At UCLA, he befriended Michael Todd and Vince Bussum. They soon told Kalanick about their other mate, Don Rodriguez, who had this cool business idea about starting an online peer-to-peer file-sharing service. Boy, did it sound tempting. In those days, with an internet connection and P2P software, any computer could share music and movies with many more directly without going through the middleman in the form of a central server. Server. At first, Kalanick doubted his friend's talk. Even if they did manage to pull things off, there was still one issue. How could they manage between balancing school and looking after a business? Even if they did drop out, what was the chance this business of theirs would succeed? But Kalanick would later correct himself. After all, if other companies like Amazon and eBay were making it in the dawn of this dot-com era, then why couldn't he or his friends? So Kalanick agreed. And together he and his classmates pulled resources from their pockets and their families. The new company they named Score Incorporated. Soon Kalanick decided to pursue Score Inc. full-time. In 1998, he took his lip of fate and dropped out of UCLA. So did his mates. On a side note though, it is possible that Kalanick must have decided that computer engineering wasn't all it was cracked up to be. As Kalanick had anticipated, Score Inc. did stand out by being one of those companies that allowed users to use their internet search engine and file sharing services to share movies and music online. As Core Inc.'s success did stand out a bit too much, for it quickly caught the eye of some big American agencies, MPAA, Motion Picture Association of America, RIAA, Recording Industry Association of America, and NMPA, National Music Publishers Association. They believed Soar Inc. had crossed some line of copyright infringement, but Kalanick and Cole begged to differ. 
But what could they do against a $250 billion lawsuit dangling above their heads? To say Sky Inc. was outmatched was almost a criminal understatement. In 2000, Kalanick had no choice but to play defensive, choosing to declare a Chapter 11 bankruptcy over ruin and jail time. Just as he feared, Kalanick found himself back to square one. Though not exactly penniless, he was still a dropout who had little in the way of skills save for his business know-how. However, in this period of his life, he consoled himself with the fact that he had been through the worst and somehow survived. There was no way things could go downhill from here. Besides, he had finally figured himself out and what he was capable of. He was no coder or technician like Bill Gates or John A. Strawstrop. If anything, he found managing the business aspect of a company more enjoyable than anything and he didn't regret that one bit. His former classmate, Michael Todd, also thought the same. It seemed great minds did think alike. In 2001, with a staff of several former SCORE employees, Kalanick and Todd started up a networking software company similar to SCORE called Red Swoosh. Kalanick's time at Red Swoosh was one of the toughest periods in his life. He didn't pay himself a regular salary. Not that he couldn't, but he just simply understood that the value of Red Swoosh was much bigger than padding his pockets. Things got so tight that Kalanick had no choice but to move home to his mother. As understandable as the circumstances may have been, any man Kalanick's age surely must have felt the pang of shame. As if things couldn't get any worse, which it already was, Kalanick's lead investor, Mark Cuban, declared that he could not foresee a possible future with Red Swish and demanded his money back. Try as he could, not even Kalanick with all his business smarts could save a sinking ship. So when Akamai Technologies came with a lifeline in the form of a $19 million bid in 2007, Kalanick accepted. Having learned another bitter lesson in entrepreneurship, Kalanick decided to take things from the perspective of an investor. With what cash he had left, he began investing in startups with predicted high returns. In 2008, he met the founder of the web discovery platform, stumble upon Garrett Camp at the Lee Web Conference. Camp conceived this idea about a black car service where you could call a car at the press of a button. Now, Kalanick considered this carefully. Most black car services in America at the time suffered from a fundamental issue where riders had no idea about what kind of car was picking them up, let alone who was driving. But what could one person do when they were in a hurry and needed a lift? Camp's business idea pleased Kalanick. For him, it would be a chance to upset the market, especially those New York cab drivers who lorded the city streets. Kalanick's bitter experience and dislike of them served all the more motivation to him. In early 2009, Camp founded UberCab in San Francisco, and together with Kalanick, who brought his business know-how, they scaled up from UberCab to the Uber that most throughout America and the world know today. And the rest is history. Kalanick spent his life overcoming challenges and failures. Where others were throwing the towel, he kept getting up over and over again until the day his golden opportunity arrived. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'd like to give you another interesting video for you to enjoy next. But before then, our team will be very happy if you can like this video and share it with your friends on social media. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss other interesting videos like this. Look at your screen now to see two other interesting videos we handpicked for you to enjoy next. We love you.